Well, hi everyone. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the price elasticity of demand. Uh, I received a few requests to cover this particular topic, so this is my best attempt in doing so. Hopefully I do it justice here. Uh, so the price elasticity of demand, the purpose of this, what we're doing is we are talking about the change in the quantity demanded due to changes in price. Uh, so really the independent variable in this particular situation is price. And we're trying to see if we change price, either increasing it or decreasing it, if that will have any subsequent effect on the quantity demanded, i.e. the amount of goods and services that consumers like you and I will buy. And we know that the law of demand, as prices rise, we typically will demand less of them. As prices decrease, we typically will demand more of them. Uh, however, there are always kind of exceptions to that, and it really depends upon the good or the service that's being sold. Some are more price sensitive to others, meaning that in some areas, increases in price don't really change demand that much. Uh, things that are necessity items that you have to buy regardless. Uh, but other items are more price sensitive, typically your luxury items, things that you don't necessarily need to live. So that's the whole purpose of the price elasticity of demand. We're trying to gauge sensitivity with regards to specific goods and services. So that's kind of how it's described, but there's a specific way that you can calculate it if you're interested in doing so. And so what I have here is I have a couple of different formulas as well as some data below that we're gonna use to calculate the price elasticity of demand. And feel free and follow along if you would like. Uh, so the price elasticity of demand, which I went ahead and notated here as simply capital PE and little o and capital D, uh, is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded, which is here, divided by the percentage change in price, which is notated here. Uh, so that is the kind of the overall equation. But in order to get that, we have to figure out, well, first, what is our percentage change in quantity demanded? And of course, what is our percentage change in price? And so we have individual equations for each of those to get to those two figures. And I have these notated here and written below. So we have QD, which stands for quantity demanded, of the new price, so the price that we are going to, minus quantity demanded of the old price, divided by quantity demanded of the old price. And then to gauge the percentage change in price, we have the new price, less the old price divided by the old price. So you can see here that we need some data in order to actually determine the price elasticity of demand. And that is this table, uh, or not really a table, but these two columns here. And so you can see in one end I have price ranging from $5 here uh, over to $10 down here. And then I have quantity demanded. And notice that as the price rises here, the quantity demanded will decrease from $1,000 on the kind of high end to, four, or not $1,000, 1,000 units rather, to 470 units on the lower end, which is of course if the price is $10. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and work through this problem here given the data that I've of course created. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded. And so the first thing that we need based on our equation is the new quantity demanded. Uh, so let's say, let me give you a example here. Let's say that we have a price of $6 and we are going to be changing increasing price to $8 a unit. So that's our problem. So we're trying to figure out the price elasticity of demand if we're changing from $6 per unit over to $8 per unit. Okay, and so now we can see subsequently what the corresponding quantity demanded is at those two price points. So the new quantity demanded, of course, is going to be 740 units. So we're gonna go ahead and write that here. And the old quantity demanded, of course, is 940 units. So we're gonna subtract 940 from 740. And then we're gonna divide by 940. And so if you do the math real quick, obviously you're gonna get a negative number 
and it should be something around negative 0.212766. And that's in a percentage basis. I'm not going to include the percentage, but just so you know, that is a, uh, expressed as a percentage. So we have percentage of uh, change in quantity demanded. Now we have to do the same thing and calculate the percentage change in price. And so I already gave you this. We know that the new price is going to be $8. The old price is six. And we of course divide that by our old price of $6 per unit. And so if you do the math real quick on a calculator, you're gonna get 0.333, and it actually goes on quite a bit. I believe there are should be seven threes altogether. Okay. So we've already figured out what our percentage change in, in quantity demand is, and we've also figured out our percentage change in price. Now the last thing we have to do is figure out the percentage or the price elasticity of demand. So we have to divide the two figures there. And so if we do that, if we take negative 0.212766 and we divide that by 0.3333333, we should get something along the lines of negative 0.638281. And so that essentially is our price elasticity of demand. And so you're probably wondering, okay, that's great. It's a negative number. I have no idea what that means. You know, let me give you kind of some, some perspective and so you know roughly what that means. Uh, there's a number of things that we do to determine roughly the significance of that. And so we can have a number of different situations. Now, the first one is when we have a, let me change color here. Let's say we have a price elasticity of demand that is greater than one. If it's greater than one, what that means is that demand is what we call in economics terms, price elastic. Which means that it's price sensitive. And so we would say that if we have a price elasticity of demand of greater than one, then we're very consumers are price sensitive with regards to this particular product or commodity, however you want to refer to it as. So by changing from six to eight dollars, consumers are very price sensitive. That will likely translate into lower demand. We sh maybe we shouldn't make such a drastic increase in terms of price. Another option is if we have a price elasticity of demand, which actually equals one. And what this refers to we call unit elastic and what that means is that there is a what we call a proportional increase between price as well as a decrease in demand and so if price goes up uh, there is a proportional decrease in the quantity demanded and the last option is if we have a price elasticity of demand which is less than one and this, what the result of this is demand is price inelastic. And by price inelastic, what we mean is that it's not price sensitive. And so consumers in this example, by going from an increase in price to $8 from six, consumers are not price sensitive. They're gonna buy less, but it isn't disproportionate. It isn't an extreme amount of less units they are purchasing. It's pretty much in proportion to, for the most part, the corresponding increase in price is kind of what that refers to. And so in that case, you know, we can kind of justify that, I suppose, by increasing price. There's a little bit of a drop in terms of quantity demanded, but it isn't a very significant drop, one that maybe we couldn't substantiate because obviously we're gonna get more in revenues there's less units sold, but we're gonna translate that into roughly similar amount of revenue. So in that case, maybe it's something that we do, maybe not, it really just depends. But that's the significance of that. So you can see in our example, we have a price elasticity of demand of negative 0.638, uh, 0.6382981. And the negative number is insignificant, just so you know, we don't even consider that, at least for price elasticity of demand. But the 0.6382981 is significant. We know that is less than one. 
And so for this example, we would consider going from a $6 price point to an $8 price point. Consumers will be uh, somewhat inelastic in terms of price, meaning they will not be as sensitive as maybe another particular situation that we have there. So that's roughly how to calculate that. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions, you know, feel free and post it in the comment box below. I'll do my best to get back to those in a, in a timely fashion. But thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day.